Welcome to Voodoo Whiskey Gaming, and this is my late review of the casting of Frank Stone. I play it on the PS5, it's also available on the Xbox Series Series and PC. Man, so the story is kind of hard to talk about because it's just too hard to talk about without like going into spoilers. So I will say you play as multiple characters, kind of like you do in most super massive games. This game specifically takes place over a couple of different time periods. At one point in the game, you're dealing with the serial killer Frank Stone. At another point in the game, you're a bunch of kids trying to film a movie in the steel mill where Frank Stone did his killing. And then another timeline, you're a group of folks who are dealing with somebody who apparently wants to buy the original prints of that film in a spooky ass mansion. And what I will say is the story goes in some places that I don't entirely love. And as for the ending, it's kind of weird and unsatisfying, yet extremely satisfying at the same time. It leaves me with this kind of just really weird feeling. And then there's a post credit scene, which uh, I don't think was necessary. I should also say that all of this takes place in the Dead by Daylight universe. So if you are a Dead by Daylight player, some of this stuff will have more meaning to you than if you're not. But even as a Dead by Daylight player, I still have mixed feelings when it comes to the story. I mean, to the point where I'm definitely going to be doing a spoiler talk. But let's move on from there and get into the audio. And the first thing I'm gonna say is the music and sound design are awesome. You definitely get that Dead by Daylight music in there, but when you're exploring, when you're moving around, there's just some, it's not even music, but it's like a sound effect here or there, but it's like a continual sound effect and it's not part of the universe. It's ambient and it's spooky and it makes you uncomfortable. But as for the music, I think it's good. I think it works very well with this game. I really enjoyed it. In a spooky, I'm not going to listen to it on my own kind of way, but I think it's very good for this game. As for the voice of work, it's hit or miss. There's one character who can just fuck all the way off and his voice actor brings that to life, but I don't really love it. And I don't really love that character's voice. Maddie, there's lines that are very miss for me. Like the delivery is just fully miss for me, but then there are other lines where I'm like, okay, I get that and that works. So that one's a little tough. The rest of the voice actors, I think, do a very good job and do their job very well, to put it simply. And then the sound effects. Overall, I think they're very good. I think all the sound effects are very well done in this game and they work very well in this game. Let's get into the gameplay mechanics and whatnot. And this is what I always call an interactive narrative. You know, a playable movie. As I mentioned, you switch from multiple characters. You do what you do in these games. You kind of explore in a limited area to find things that will give you little clues and hints to the world around you. But the core of these games are the decisions, whether it's dialogue, how you respond, whether you're comforting, whether you're a dick, whether you're dismissive, things like that. But then you have your QTE sequences, which I thought they did a unique thing with this game. Instead of your stereotypical ones, they're the Dead by Daylight QTE kind of things, where it's the little circle going around and you got the safe zone instead of just having X pop up on the screen. But I will say that did throw me off at times because I'm just not used to that in these games. I think at some point I will give this another run through and probably do better because I'll be used to that idea. One thing I do love, and this is kind of a dialogue thing, but a gameplay thing as well, is that, and I've seen this in other games, Star Wars Outlaws did it. When you're in a conversation conversation and you say get too far away or you do something to interact with something and it cuts off that character's dialogue if you go back to them they'll pick up where they left off i really like that especially in this game especially in a game that is so very narrative driven i think that's incredibly important i just love that in any game that does it but love it here especially one thing this game does that a lot of games really fail at is it lets you know when you're about to like move into the next scene so you can go to a door and be like oh shit i'm about to move into the next scene better stop myself so i can explore some more a lot more games need to do as good of a job at that as this one does but then let's get into a couple of gameplay mechanic complaints that I have. Firstly, I got all 12 of the trinkets, or at least the game tells me I did. Now I'm wondering if I did. But then immediately after finding the 12th out of the 12th trinket, I went to the box where my trinkets are and it says I only have 10. So that's weird. Did I find the 12th trinket or did I find 12 out of 12? In that case, it should say, you know, you got 10 out of 12, not 12 out of 12. 
So that's weird and frustrating. I'm like 99% sure that I did find all 12 and the game fucked me. But then another annoyance is characters don't move the fuck out of your way. Oh my God. I was exploring. I went into a room. And then when I was trying to leave that room, two of the characters were blocking the doorway and I couldn't push them out of the way, which that's annoying when you can't push characters out of the way. But also it's annoying if the character doesn't back their fucking ass out on their own. I had to quit out and then go back in and in these games it saves very frequently even if you don't notice it is so it picked up like half a second before that and they're still blocking the fucking doorway and then the second time i got stuck even worse so i had to back out again and restart again fortunately that time one of the other ais like he pushed everyone else out of the way one of the other characters he was able to push them out so i was able to get out but it was really frustrating and really fucking stupid that that's a thing still now let's get into the controls and the controls are ugh. They're like 50-50. When you're moving around and exploring, they are very clumsy and clunky, and I don't think they work particularly well. When you're doing QTEs, they work well. They're responsive to that, but your movement is garbage. But also you can get too close to objects and the interact button like disappears. Or like when I needed to jump over a gap, I got too close to the gap and the interact button or prompt disappeared, which I guess that's more gameplay than controls, but they kind of blend together there and it sucks. So overall, controls are just kind of hit or miss, and that's unfortunate. I mean, they're hit when it comes to QTEs, which is very important to surviving and, you know, press X to not die and all that shit. Let's move on to the graphics and visuals. And again, hit or miss, faces look very good. There are elements that look really good. Facial expression, facial capture, detail in the faces in general. I also think the environments are fantastic. I think those are extremely well done. Like no matter where you are, you can tell that there was a lot of care and effort put into the game from a visual standpoint, or I mean from like a world standpoint and world building standpoint. But there are things here or there that could absolutely look better. Specifically, once again, looking at hair and design. Some of the character designs, like Stan's hair, bringing it to life. They did not do a good job. Like, I understand what they were going for, but it looks really shitty. And it's honestly quite distracting when it, for me at least, I, I thought it was stupid looking. It's like he's got a fucking onion on top of his head. And I'm not talking about the bun. It's like they cut off part of his head and then put an onion on it. And uh, yeah, no, not a good look. And that's from a design standpoint specifically for him. I think a lot of the other things though for the characters do look good. Like his outfit fits who he is. Maddie, it works for her. Linda, like that design is good. There's just some things like the hair doesn't necessarily look as real as it could and move like it could. Then again, this isn't necessarily like an extremely expensive game. So, you know, the detail may not be there for that, but it would be nice. But again, the world though, I thought that was cool. I want to come back to that because when you're the kids trying to film, I say kids, teens, and they're in the town. I really love that feel. It feels like an older town, not super old, but you know, ye 80s, but it was like 1980. I thought they did a good job with that. But also when you're walking around the steel mill or the mansion or whatever, I, I think there's a lot of detail there and I think it works for the world building very well. Also, as a Dead by Daylight fan, I love all the little like fan service-y kind of things throughout and how they actually do end up fitting into the game. I'm pointing this out just kind of as a visual thing. I was walking through the curiosity store and saw the mask or I was in like an area and I saw the Wraith's weapon. You know, there's just kind of fun things and how the collectibles kind of tie to the killers and whatnot. I just thought that was fun. I do have one massive complaint when it comes to the graphics and visuals, and that is not the final chapter, because like the final chapter is like really kind of just kick off and start moving rapidly, and you don't even like really think it should be switching from chapter to chapter kind of thing. But there is a part where there are shots that are just so fucking dark. But then it goes to another cut from a different angle and it's really light and you can see everything going on and then it cuts back to really fucking dark and you can't even see a character's face. Like you can literally see their teeth and that's it. You can't actually see their face. And there's a part in that where like, I don't even know what the fuck happened, honestly. Like it, it's really disappointing. That part is, I don't know if it's glitched or artistic. They need to patch that so that the lighting is far better there. Cause really I don't have that complaint throughout the rest of the game. 
game. Like, when they're shooting their film, they're in the fucking steel mill at night, and it's never so dark you can't see what the fuck's going on. But there's this section where it's just so unneededly dark that, like, I really don't know certain things that happened, how certain characters went to certain places, and so on down the line, because it was just so dark I couldn't actually see. I could guess which characters it was based on the occasional light scenes, but it, yeah, that just, that sucked. That needs major patching to just unfuck that situation, in my opinion. Okay, so to get into the wrap-up, I honestly, I don't know for this game. I am very mixed on this game. I heard this is getting some mixed reviews, but I am mixed on this game, because in some ways I enjoyed it, and in some ways I definitely want to replay it. But there are absolutely elements of the story that I don't love, and then there are elements that I do love. I hate the controls, and I hope they fix the visuals. So maybe I could recommend this game if it was a little cheaper and with some patching. Hopefully they see some of these things as issues and decide to patch them. Then I would be more comfortable recommending this game, but as it stands, I'm really mixed, which I guess I would say I'm not comfortable recommending it at this point, maybe down the line. Okay, in the comments down below, why don't you tell me, would you like to see more spinoffs from Dead by Daylight? I think it could be cool because I think they've put a lot of effort into the lore, but what do you think? And as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. And if you like what I'm doing in general, share and subscribe. Have a good one.